Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Schell, Nouvelle Veterinary Research. Today is one of our first videos we're doing for educational purposes. Today's video's topic is going to be just doing an overall evaluation or examination of the horse for all intensive and normal purposes. I think that these bits of information are important for the average horse owner to be able to detect what problems might be present to evaluate the heart for elevations of heart rate, maybe low heart rates uh, that may be accompany things like colic, to be able to listen to the abdomen itself in terms of gut sounds, again, for evaluation of colic, looking at various lumps and bumps. It's basically just the basics of what I think every horse owner should know uh, if they're going to own a horse, to be able to evaluate from the basics, maybe to help kind of cut back on some of the veterinary expenses, to know when to call a vet out, when not to call a vet out. So, with that being said, one of the first things we look at from a vet's point of view looking at these horses is just their general demeanor. We also look at their body condition. Um, it's helpful in a different array of situations, again, depending on what this patient is present for. Uh, but we'll kind of get an idea of what their orientation is. Are they alert? Are they responsive? Are they depressed? A lot of times if we're running a fever or even with colics, um, they've got their ears back, heads dropped down, fairly depressed type of mentation. So all that is kind of important and a little bit of a piece of the puzzle that we put together. Uh, but looking at the eyes, how wide open are they? Um, you know, in some cases we can look at the whites of the eyes and we'll see this coloration, things like a yellow color that might be indicated with uh, an anemia or a type of liver problems. Um, we're looking at both of the nares here to make sure that both are patent and that we're blowing air equally out of both of the nostrils, that we're not wide open, which might go along with a horse that's having a hard time breathing. So we're just looking for normal types of situations here with the eyes, the mentation, the nares. You can lift up the upper lip and looking into the gums. Um, we're looking for a nice pink color. Generally, we're a little bit of a darker pink around the, uh, the tooth margins there itself. But we're looking for a nice pink color. It's moist. Um, in the veterinary world, we'll talk about capillary refill time, or CRT. And that is basically assessed by taking our fingers, pushing in on the gums right here, to where we make it go blanched white, and then it gradually turns back to a pink. And that's an indication of capillary blood flow to those areas. When we blanch down on it, it turns white. When we release, it should turn back to a nice pink color, generally within two to three seconds tops. That's normal. Anything that's prolonged from that generally indicates that maybe we're dehydrated. We've got poor blood flow due to various reasons. So normal refill time is about two to three seconds. And the normal color of the mucous membrane should be pink and a nice moist feel to them. So moving on from there, Obviously, looking at the body condition of the animal, the other thing that we will do is start to evaluate the heart rate, and we will do that now. All right, so now we're going to evaluate the cardiovascular system, mainly uh, looking at the heart rate. The easiest thing to do, you can pick up a stethoscope, uh, you know, at any veterinary supply warehouse. You can go to local pharmacies. In a lot of the case, they will have uh, lower grade nurse quality stethoscopes. Really anything will do, so it doesn't have to be the top of the line stethoscope. But what we're going to be doing is listening to the heart of these guys. The easiest access point for the heart or the auscult or listen to the heart in a horse is behind the, uh, the left elbow. The heart is closest to the chest wall on the left hand side, so we're able to hear it better. Um, you have to remember the average heart rate of a horse is generally between 35 to 40 beats per minute. It's not the fastest thing in the world, so it takes a little bit of time to be able to listen to it because the horses, because of how large their chest is, the heart tends to be a little bit muffled, a little bit quieter, so it is very helpful if you have a quiet environment when you're listening to it. But it's going to be at a very, very slow pace. Um, the heart itself, what you're going to hear in the horse is, is basically we've got two heart sounds itself. It's basically a lub-dub, lub-dub type of thing. And the lub-dub is one heartbeat. And again, what you're going to do is find the heart rate, watch your watch. Generally, I will watch for about 15 seconds, listen to the heart, count off how many times we're beating in 15 seconds, multiply it by four, and then we've got our heart rate per minute. So again, average horse is between 35 to 40. And we're going to take a listen to him. So we put our stethoscope in, and we will place it behind the left elbow, kind of tucked inside, firmly up against the chest wall, and you should be able to hear your heartbeat. In some cases, it does take a little bit of manipulating to find that exact spot that you can hear it the best in. You can go up, down, a little bit further towards the front, or a little bit back towards the rear, uh, but you should be able to find it, be able to hear it fairly well in most horses. 
The larger the horse, the more body weight they are carrying, the harder sometimes it can be to actually hear the heart, the more focused you have to be on listening to it. So what is the importance of listening to the heart or evaluating the heart rate in a horse? Generally, number one, it's an indication of fitness. The more fit these horses are, such as a race horse such as this, we generally have lower heart rates, sometimes as low as 28 beats per minute. It's a reflective of how fit or how healthy they are. Horses that are experiencing pain or illness, anemias, that type of conditions, heart rate's going to go up. When we're dealing with colicky horses that are painful, we will use this heart rate as an indicator of how bad or how critical the situation we are dealing with. The higher the heart rate, it equates to the more pain the animal is feeling, which then equates to potentially more of a severe problem that we're dealing with inside of the belly itself. Uh, but that holds true as well with any other type of condition. We can have a horse with, a, uh, with an acute fracture or an acute bow or tear in the tendon, um, even a trauma type of situation. Evaluate the heart rate. Heart rate generally is going to be above that 40 uh, beat per minute mark, which is going along with pain. So we'll use that heart rate as an indicator of pain. We also use it as a reflective indicator of how we're doing with our pain management. First, you know, in terms of pain medications, you know, are we getting that heart rate to come down? Um, is the horse stable? Is the horse feeling better? That kind of jazz. So we've got heart rate covered. Uh, you can escalt the lungs themselves as well just by working up into this area. There's different areas of the chest that we will listen to um, for cases of things like COPD or asthma. Uh, we're listening for different sounds. It's a little bit kind of hard to explain uh, in a video such as this, but these are the general areas that we will escalt or listen to the lungs themselves. Moving into the abdomen, in terms of evaluation for colics, uh, the first thing we'll generally look at in terms of a colic when they present looking at the abdomen itself is, is do we have a bloated or a distended abdomen and we'll look from the side generally we'd like to see a nice indentation here in the flanks um, looking for normal types of situations we'll also evaluate them from the rear visually looking at them to see you know are we more round than what we should be are we more distended does it seem to be lopsided are we an apple type of shape you know do we have any gaseous distension of the abdomen so that's the first thing we'll start to sculpt or, or to evaluate in terms of escalting or listening to the abdomen for colic type of purposes, we essentially break the belly up into four sections. We've got an upper left quadrant, lower left quadrant, upper right quadrant, lower right quadrant. Why do we do that? Because essentially we have different sections or components of the intestines that are in different locations. So we mark them off by location, listening for sounds that they are moving, that they're making their normal happy sounds that they should be. And so we can kind of help to identify where potentially the problem is at. When we're looking at the upper left quadrant here, we're mainly dealing with small intestinal type of noises. The lower left quadrant is the uh, left dorsal colon, or the left large colon, I'm sorry. The upper right quadrant is the cecum. The lower right quadrant is the uh, right large colon, essentially. So when we listen to these areas, we'll move around going left, listening for a lot of gurgling noises here that might be associated with the small intestines move down to the lower left quadrant which will help us to kind of give some noises associated with the uh, large colon in this area on the right side again we've got the cecum up in the top the cecum itself kind of makes a little bit of a dripping type of noise um, it's almost like a metal can with a little bit of water in it if you ping that can um, it kind of has a little bit of a resonant type of sound to it and then again we'll listen to the bottom right quadrant listening for large intestinal or large colon sounds itself uh, in addition to colic workups, most veterinarians will do a rectal examination uh, to feel whether if there's any displacements, any movements along those lines that are abnormal or uh, atypical for that animal itself. One of the other things that we will do to assess whether if we have gas buildup is, is that we will place our stethoscope and we will ping around it with our fingers. Now the purpose of the pinging is, is we're sending in a sound vibration that will a lot of times interface with gas and create a pinging type of noise back to us. If we have just normal gas moving through the intestinal tracts, most of the time we won't get a consistent ping back. But if we have, for instance, over where the cecum's at, if the cecum becomes uh, contorted or, or is compromised in any way, shape, or form, it begins to build gas, such as a balloon, we can consistently ping all the way around it. We can kind of help to identify where that organ's at. The pinging sound stays pretty consistent. It's not moving around. And so it helps us to identify potentially what organ's involved and maybe even potentially what the problem is. So that's evaluating the intestinal tract. The other main thing that we will do with these guys, obviously as part of the physical examination, is taking their temperature. And uh, we're gonna cover that here in a second. All right, 
right, so taking the temperature of a horse can be a little bit of a tricky thing in some cases. Uh, for all intents and purposes, we generally use a glass uh, mercury thermometer, at least I do myself. The uh, digital thermometers are okay. You tend to need to penetrate a little bit deeper with those guys to get a, an accurate reading, so I tend to use the glass thermometers. Uh, the drawbacks to these things are is that they are glass. You need to be very careful with them. Make sure that they do not break off while you're shaking them down. Make sure they do not break off inside of the horse. Could be a bad thing. So we need to hang on to these things uh, to make sure they don't break. When we're taking the temperature of the horse, I highly recommend hanging on to the end of this uh, because in some cases they will suck it in and then we have to either go in after it or, or keep our fingers crossed that they pass it in the uh, bowel movement. So hang on to these guys and be careful with them. When you've got a glass thermometer, um, you need to shake it down. You're essentially shaking the mercury down into the tip and you're looking for a reading very, very low, generally around 94, which is a good starting point. Before I take the temperature of any horse, because they're not used to having things put up their rear ends back there, we need to be a little bit cautious uh, for our sake and theirs. I will generally take a finger running underneath the tail and kind of manipulate back here on their rectal area, even shoving a finger into their anus if I need to, just to let them know this is what I'm going to do. It helps me to evaluate how's that horse going to handle it, is he going to kick out at me, is he going to dance all over the place, what's he going to do. So if he's tolerating my finger okay, then I will just use any uh, everyday KY jelly type of deal and you're going to stick your thermometer into the KY, get some on there, and we are going to then reach underneath here, pull the tail head up, insert our thermometer into the rectum. Again, we're going to go in probably three quarters of the way. I'm just going to hang on to the tip of this as it's in there and we're going to wait probably a good two to three minutes. Ideally, again, it's dependent on the horse. Sometimes they're only going to give you a minute or two tops uh, before they're dancing all over the place. We run the risk of losing this or breaking it off inside and so we just get the best time that we can. Ideally, it's about two to three minutes. We're going to pull it out. The uh, mercury thermometers can be a little bit tricky to read. You just have to kind of rock this guy back and forth until you can see where that mercury lies. Um, I do not recommend coming in directly behind a horse and just popping the thermometer in there. Um, it's just not going to happen very much in most cases. Um, you run the risk of getting kicked. So always from the side, I generally keep an arm on the hip at the very least so I know what this leg is doing. If my eyes aren't on it, take the temperature and away we go. Okay, so we just got done doing a basic physical examination of the horse. We talked about the mentation. We talked about looking at the, uh, the nares, looking at the mouth, determining capillary refill time, the point that the gum should be a nice pink color and moist in color with a refill time generally of two to three seconds. We discussed listening to the heart, the impact and the importance of the heart rate, how it relates to colics and pain. And we also talked about listening to the abdomen, normal sounds, pinging, gas accumulation, and the impact on colics. And we also discussed how to safely take a body temperature of a horse, which I did forget to mention. The normal temperature from my uh, point of view is around 100.6 to 101. Um, again, you have to take into consideration the uh, um, uh, status of that horse. Did we just get done running around a pasture? What is the outside environment like? Um, so we need to kind of take all that into consideration with that body temperature, but a normal temperature generally is about 100.6 to 101. Anything above that should be uh, considered abnormal in my books. But I feel that all this information is very important and that every horse owner should know this information. Reason being is, is that if they have a crisis situation or what they perceive to be as a crisis situation, they can evaluate the horse initially, determine what our heart rate is hopefully, determine what we're doing in terms of the belly, are we making gas sounds, are we not making gas sounds, what the body temperature is, what the mentation of this horse is, what his gums look like, so that they can kind of make an assessment, is this a real critical situation, do I need to call the vet now? Or at the very least, when they do talk to their veterinarian, they can pass this information on to him or her, and over the phone, making maybe uh, help to guide the uh, client as to what needs to be done next and whether an actual farm call is needed. So.